Yes. Uh, you talked about the air pushing the, the, and the, it actually pushes the tongue out of the way. Without no, the your tongue drops out of the way and allows the air to go. So at no point in time, you don't push your air and it stops moving? No. Well, it, it stops when the tongue stops it. And there is some throat action, but you don't want to think about that because then you start doing tonguing with your throat. The less you think about when you're playing, the better as far as the physical apparatus. You should be thinking about this perfect instrument I have playing in my head. Do I sound like that? You know? And so you have to have an image of what you want to sound like. And then think, do I sound that good? And that's where your ears become very, very important. But the articulation, da, da, it's a matter of coordination. Coordination. It's a coordination factor. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Well, there has to be some movement, but not too much. Because uh, the way to do that is through working with flexibility exercises, working with uh, uh, scales, working with uh, a visualizer or the mouthpiece alone, and developing the control. Because where is the sound created? Right there. This doesn't make any sound, so why is it moving? All it's when, it, when it's moving, it's jerking these muscles all around. They're never developing, and that's why it there's that problem. So it takes, it takes a while. You want to minimize the amount of movement you make. And we'll talk about that maybe with our next, our next student here, who is Andrew Winker. Andrew, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I can warm up a little bit for a couple minutes. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I pull a chair? Not at all. Any other questions about that? Thinking of trying to do this in one short period is very difficult. You need about 20 of these. <laughs> but we can get a good, a good amount talked about here. <coughs> Believe it or not, he's doing the same tune. Believe me. Thank you. 
Nice, very nice. What do you think are the biggest challenges for you in this piece or in any in your playing generally? Um, my breathing was a little shallow at some parts. I mean, I felt like a, on a lot of the heavier stuff, like uh -huh. I slipped up there, my, my air was like this. Way okay. Like anything, anything else generally in your playing that you'd like to improve? Uh, my arm was a little weird. Okay. Uh, we don't call it weird. We just say maybe not as developed. Okay. <laughs> It can be developed a little strong, more strongly. Uh, let's not talk about the physical things of your playing. What is there in your playing you would like to improve in the sounds that you make? Um, maybe a little, a little wider back of the bridge. Okay. Anything else? Um, I don't think that I you have a very nice sound, but what we can we do to improve that tone quality? Um, what about vibrato? Okay, we could talk about vibrato. And something very much related to vibrato. When you have a beautiful sound, but you have a lot of intonation challenges. 
And uh, let's talk about that in relationship to how do you correct those? How do you play better in tune? You play extremely well. You have good fluency. You have, uh, you know, a very nice tone quality. Yet there were several notes that uh, were distinctly, you know, sharp and flat. And it's very hard on this particular melody because when you play this melody, what are the tendencies of an F major triad? Okay, but what are the tendencies on, for you to play on that? Play an F A C on your horn. Okay. What's the tendencies of those of those notes? The F sharp, A flat, C, and a little bit of Okay, that makes it very difficult because all none of those notes are centering in. Boom. Have you ever worked in front of a tuner? And what, have you been able to correct those? Yeah, I just a lot of time when I get in the thick of playing, I just kind of somehow lose it. That's why it's good to sort of occasionally work with a tuner and watch it while you're playing. Right. You know, so try your F. Let me get you one here. I think I have one here. Try that F major arpeggio and take your time and get every note to sort of center. There you go. Hear the difference in the quality and the, in the pitch. Can you hear that out in the audience here? It makes quite a difference in the sound. And so working with your pitch would be an important factor. Because you play so well, you need to work with your intonation. And you can make up what, uh, what I call an intonation chart and uh, have every note with alternate fingerings. Now I want you to try this. Play the A, 1, and 3. <laughs> I'll play it second and then one three. Da da. One. Okay, there's that fingering, the one and three is sharper, isn't it? Try one, two, and four for that note. See how much sharper that is? So you could have four or five different fingerings for every note with different intonations. Say you're playing with a string group that likes to play uh, in a, instead of A40, A448, you know. That knowing a sharp fingering would be real helpful. <laughs> and so that's one way you can develop improving your intonation is find out what alternate fingerings would be helpful. The, the, but uh, a better way in, of, of really having control is trying to develop your ability to lip or alter the pitch. Okay. Have you done much work with your vibrato? What kind of vibrato do you use? Um, or do you use a vibrato very much? Yeah, I just Okay. What kinds of vibrato are available? Yes? You can use an air, a diaphragmic vibrato, a jaw vibrato, or what else? From bonus, where you can use a hand vibrato, can't you? Hand vibrato is not as, as, as appropriate uh, on euphonium. It's hard to get it going. I don't like to interfere with my breathing, although there are some very fine players who have used the diaphragmic vibrato. I use the jaw vibrato for three reasons. Number one, you want to have some rules in any type of vibrato. First of all, you have to define what vibrato is. Who would like to define vibrato for us? Anyone know? What is vibrato? Yes. Pardon? Changing a pitch? That's, that's sort of the, a process, but what what really is vibrato? What is the purpose of vibrato? Think of it a little harder. Okay, or in the back here. Okay, those are all true, but you need to think of a, of a more altruistic definition. Vibrato is a musical tool used to shape and enhance the sound. Think of it that way. And how you create the vibrato is what we're talking about. 
vibrato is created by a variation in the pitch and the intensity of the sound, both ideas. Uh, uh, and so uh, what you want to do is make sure that you have three rules happening. Number one, you'll be able to turn it off. Number two, you'll be able to control the depth and the uh, speed of the vibrato. And three, you have a knowledge of how you're going to apply it. You don't want to be like the Hammond organ in the skating rink, you know, all skate, dead, you know, going constantly with the same speed. I like the jaw vibrato for three reasons. We have all threes here, I guess. Number one, it is easy to turn off unless you belong to the International Association of Jaw Hoppers. You've heard those guys, you know. I used to play a circus band, and there was an 80-year-old, barely a tone player, used to sit beside him. And he used to play, and he'd sound like this guy and, and retired from the Salvation Army. <laughs> It's like that 80-year-old soprano in the church choir that won't retire. <coughs> you know, uh, you don't want to have that where, uh, and so you want to be able to turn it off and control it. And the reason I like the jaw vibrato is because, number one, I find it ultimately controllable. Number two, it also develops the ability to lift up and down. You find the center of the pitch, the core of the pitch, and the center of the tone quality. And number three is an auxiliary benefit. You know if you can vibrate when you're up a register, your embouchure is not too tight. You know, if you can play a top note <laughs> with a nice vibrato, you know your embouchure is not too tight. And so uh, working with that might be a good idea to develop your ability to use the vibrato to find the center of that pitch and practice without vibrato and with vibrato. Now, in, in creating the jaw vibrato, the average speed, many times I hear a lot of people who play with vibrato that I feel is too slow and too wide. Too slow and too wide. You don't want the vibrato to create, oh, yeah, 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 this wobbleato. I call it wobbleato instead of vibrato. You know, and so it disturbs the pitch. You want to have a center to the pitch. And so you want to think, of, first of all, when you're first learning it, you want to see how much you can get to either side of the center of the pitch. When you started learning, what did you do? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's hear it on an F. <laughs> It's much slower. Okay. Did you ever play it that slowly? Probably not. You need to play it that slowly. And then gradually bring it up and get so you can, at first you'll get a lot of jaw motion and very little pitch variation. Eventually though you want to get it at the point where the vibrato has a feeling of comes right down to it, there's very little jaw motion. It's mostly lip motion, like you're saying, wee, 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 wee. And so the sound then has that. <laughs> so the, the vibrato centers the pitch, and it doesn't disturb it so much. And if you see your tuner, if you see it moving like this, your vibrato is probably too much. If you see it quivering right in the center of the pitch, you know it's probably appropriate. And one good way to tell it uh, is if someone comes up to you after your concert and says, oh, you have a lovely vibrato, you're probably using too much. But if they say, oh, you have a lovely sound, a lovely tone quality, you know it's integrated into the sound, and that's the appropriate, appropriate activity. Do uh, you have any other questions about anything? Well, we're, I think we're out of time, but thank you very much, thank you. Josh. <laughs> you played for me before, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, appreciate your attendance here. As you can see, it's an exciting thing to develop your skills so that you can be musically more effective. Uh, there are three secrets to success, which are practice, practice, and practice. The more time you spend with a horn up to your face, the better you will be. 
but there are th uh, at least four elements of that. Number one, you have to have a certain amount of talent. You know, a certain amount of, of, of God-given talent. Number two, you have to have good instruction. You have to have proper instruction that helps guide you and, and find the correct principles on how to develop those skills that you need and the musical skills that you need to know so that you become more educated, so you have something to say when you learn how to play. Number three, of course, you need to practice day and night. You know, the more you practice, the better. But number four, you need experience. You need the chance to play in front of people. You should take every opportunity you have to perform. Play for, you know, uh, the Church's Ladies Aid Society, the Rotary Club, the Kiwanis Club. Wherever there is an opportunity to perform, take it an advantage of that opportunity. Learn to play as a soloist. Make sure you learn at least one solo a year or more. And learn it. Really get so you can stand up and play it from memory. Go to the UIL competition if it's available to you. Uh, do other things that allow you to develop those skills that will turn you into a better musician. And that will really help you. It's, it's very important that you get experience in doing it because you can practice day and night. Then you get in front of some uh, of an audience, what happens? You know, it's a different, a different, whole different scene. And so uh, those are the four things you need to do. Uh, is gain those things and it's been a real pleasure being here with you today thank those who set this up and made it possible I hope we'll see all of you tomorrow at the concert uh, and uh, you can take notes and help me with uh, some critique after the fact and see if I follow what I preach but at any event we uh, hope you will all keep playing all your life it's something you can do all your life you don't have to be a quote professional player or professional musician you can be, you can play up to, you know, like this 80-year-old guy in the circus band, in the, in the rodeo band that I used to play with. He was great. He was a great musician and uh, had hardly any teeth left either. So no wonder he had a wobbly sound. But it's, uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for you in, uh, in this area of the country. Texas, you know, has wonderful band programs, has wonderful opportunities for study and wonderful opportunities for advancement. And remember, the better you play, the more fun it is. So it gets to be more fun as you develop more skills. And it can be a, it can be a great joy to you in your life. So thank you all for coming. If anyone has any individual questions, I'll be here for a few minutes afterwards before our rehearsal. Thank you.